we go to price elasticity of demand. You know, there's demand already. We talked about demand. The, norm, the amount of goods and and house old is willing to buy at a given price and time. That is what demand is. So individuals, consumers, most of the time we want to react to price change. So as firms, firms they come up with a price. When they come up with that price, they want to see the reaction of customers about the price. If it is sustainable or not sustainable. That's why we have what we call elasticity. So what is price elasticity of demand? Price elasticity of demand is the degree of responsiveness between the quantity demanded of a product as a result of a change in price. The degree of responsiveness between the quantity demanded of a product as a result of a change in price. So there's gonna be a change in price, maybe an increase in price or a decrease in price. So how do consumers react, respond to that change in price? That is price elasticity. Do we get it? Do we get price elasticity feeling? Clear, right? Yeah. Good. So they said for some goods, a price change will result in a large change in the quantity demanded, and for others, others, a small change, others, a small change. It all depends on the type of good. So some goods are price. Um, in elastic, and some goods are price elastic. It depends. Some goods, no matter what the price are, we will continue to buy. Some, a price change, like an increase in price, might stop us from buying such products or reduce the quantity we used to buy. That is what they are saying there. So they said two demand curves are shown with different slopes representing two different products, A and B. So we have to go down to see what happens there. Okay, yeah. So look at what we have in product A and B. I think you are there. Just scroll down, please. In the graph. Yes, please. So based on the graph we are seeing here. The A, B, B. Yeah, demand for product A and demand for product, product B. So what really happened here is the price, the original price was eight mm -hmm. for, for both products. Product A, product B, the original price was eight. But there's a change in price. Yes or no? Yeah. So there's an increase in price from 8 to 10. What happens with an increase in price from 8 to 10? Eight the to demand 10. for product A decrease. increases a bit. Let's say, wait, I want to be, yes. An increase in price. Let's see what they say. Is it? The yes. quantity decreases. Yes. Hold on, please. Okay. At a price of. No, yeah, they're talking about a falling price here. Sorry. It's a falling price. So a falling price from 10, the price for product oh, A so and B. Yeah, shifted from 10 to 8. Yeah, because the product, okay, yeah, the demand for product A and product B was 10. Then there's a falling price from 10 to 8. So a falling price from 10 to 8 increases okay. the quantity demanded for product A with 10. From 100 to 100. To one, no, for, oh, for, the, for, a, for, for a. the product A, it's just 110. And for product B, 150. So it is it is derived that with this with this, with this falling price, there's a significant change in the quantity demanded for product A, but there's more change in, in, the, in the quantity demanded for product B. So a falling price affects, reflected more in the quantity demanded for product B than, than product A. Do you get the point here? Yeah. So that means the demand for product A is price inelastic, while demand for product B is price elastic. Do you get the difference here? It is inelastic if the, if the change is not significant. It is elastic if the change is significant. significant. Do you get the point here? Yeah. Any question about that? So you look at it. They said for product A, the price change resulted in a small change in demand. So the change in demand was not as big as the change in price. So the price fell by 20%, but demand only increased by 10% from 100 to 110 units. When this happens, they come and say the good is what's inelastic. I just explained that, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's clear. So for product B, it's elastic because the change in price, the fall in price has resulted into an increase in the quantity demanded significantly. Do you have any questions about that? Okay, okay. we'll move on. So let's go to, all right. So 
they said it is possible to calculate the price elasticity of demand of a good using the formula shown below. So, like I said earlier, firms, consumers do not need it. Price elasticity of demand does not have anything to do with you, consumer. It is firms that need to know the price elasticity of demand for their product. Do we get the point here? Firms wants to know. Firms want to know if the demand for their product is elastic or inelastic. That will decide, that will make them to determine or to decide if they have to increase the price or have to reduce the price. How do we calculate price elasticity of demand? To calculate it, it is percentage change in the quantity demanded over percentage change in price. Percentage change in the quantity demanded over percentage change in price. We have the equation here. So yeah, the equation is Q2 minus Q1 over Q1 divided by P2 minus P1 over P1. That's the formula. Where your Q1 is the quantity demanded, the original quantity, while Q2 is the change in quantity. P1 is the original price. P2 is that change in price. That formula, I derive the formula. Mm -hmm. Q2 minus Q1 over Q1 divided by P2 minus P1 over P1. So here, they said, when price falls from 10 to 8, the PED would be this. But how do we know if it is this? You know, we have the product. I think they used the same. OK, yeah. We have 10. Let me have a pen, please. Thank you. And if, let me use your book. Yeah. So the price, they said, for, for product A, I think you guys have to come closer here. Okay. For product A and product B. For product A, the original price was ten dollars, right? Yes. And the quantity was hundred. For then there was a change in price. So this is our P one, and this is our Q one. Do you get that? Okay. Then there was a fall in price P2 to eight dollar, right? So this is our P two, and this one hundred and ten. One hundred and ten, which is our Q two for product A. Was okay, yes. So we said. PED is Q2 minus Q1 over Q1 divided by P2 minus P1 over P1. So 10 over uh, 10 over 2. Uh, 10 over. 10. So we check Q2, 110 minus Q1, 100. Mm -hmm. 10 over 100. Divided by Q1, 100. Mm -hmm. Divided by P2, which is 8 mm -hmm. minus, two, two, minus two 10 over... over over 10, 10, right? So here we have over 10 and uh, 10 over 100. 10 over 100 divided by minus 2 over 10. This one equals 1. Uh, no, 1 over 10. Zero. No, one. hold on, please. Just take that aside. Multiply by 10 over minus 2, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have 10 cancel this. Zero eight, cancel eight. this, yeah? Yes? Mm -hmm. 10 cancel this. So we have minus 1 over 2, which is the same as minus 0 0.5. Do you get it? And when you flip it to a percentage, it will be a... No, this is how you leave this it. Is, yeah, it even like that's that. the PED, yeah. Do you get it? Yes. So that's the 0 0.5 they got there. So 110 minus 100 divided by 100 divided by 8 minus 10 over 100 gives us 10 over 100 divided by minus 2 over 10. And that gives oh. us 10 over 100 multiplied by 10 over minus 2. Yeah, there it is. Yes. Is it clear? Yeah. So the derivative is this P2 minus Q2 minus Q1 mm -hmm. over Q1 divided by P2 minus P1 over P1. So for this kind of product, irrespective of the negative sign, we don't it doesn't matter because it's 0 0.5. It is considered as inelastic. It is less mm -hmm. than one. Do mm -hmm. you understand? So let's check the second product. They say for product B, we have P1 to be 10. P2 to be 8, Q1 to be 100, Q2 to Q2 be 150. 150. So we have Q2 minus Q1, 150 minus 100 over Q1, over, over divided by 8 minus 10 over, over 10. 10. So here we have 50 over 100 divided by minus 2 over, over 10. 10. So here we have 50 over 100 multiplied by 10 over minus 2. Mm -hmm. So we have Zero, zero, we have five minus over five over two 
which is same as 2.5, so minus 2.5. So minus this, is, this is elastic because it is greater than greater than zero. Greater than one. Ah, so when it's greater than one, it's elastic. It's elastic. If it is one, it is unitary. Is it clear? Okay. So that's about price elasticity of demand. So Yen said, why do we use okay, hold on, please. Okay, the okay, interpreting the numerical uh the numerical value of elasticity. They said if the value of PD, are you there, guys? Yeah. Okay, they said if the value of PD is less than one, demand is said to be inelastic. I said that already. If it is less than one, it is inelastic. If it is greater than one, it is elastic. If it, the PD is zero, it yeah. is perfectly inelastic. Perfectly. Yeah, it's zero. Nothing changes perfectly. If it is to infinity, it is Perfect. perfectly yeah. elastic. That means it's greater. It's, you, can't, you cannot imagine it. Yeah. And if it is one, it is unitary. That means percentage change in quantity demanded is the same as percentage change in price. That's unitary. Any question about that? But, you have a question? Yes. But perfectly elastic is it's not like, you cannot find that. Perfectly elastic. Yeah. We can. It depends. It depends on the quantity and it depends on the price. We, if we can't find it, they wouldn't say it there is. Do you get the point? Situations might warrant it. But whatever we have, it is for we economists to check if it is elastic, if it is inelastic, if it is perfectly elastic, if it is perfectly inelastic, if it is unitary or not. Yeah. Is it clear? Yes. So we go to this the, the curve now. They said price, price elasticity and the slope of the demand curve. Are you there? So the demand curve for the two products have different slopes. For product A, the demand curve is steep. This is common for goods that, that have inelastic demand like product A. For product B, why is it steep? It is steep because there's no significant change. It is inelastic. Do you get the point? Mm -hmm. So for product B, the demand curve is much flatter. Goods that have elastic demand like product B tends to have relatively flatter demand curve. There are some special cases where PD is either zero, which is infinite, or infinite. So, what we have to understand here is that when the demand curve is vertical, if it is vertical, that it is perfectly elastic, inelastic, it is vertical. But if it is horizontal, it is perfectly inelastic. Is it clear? Yes. Do you get the point? Please? Yeah. If it is Vertical, the demand curve is what perfectly inelastic. inelastic. Or if it is horizontal, horizontal perfectly it's perfectly elastic. Perfectly elastic yeah. or inelastic? Elastic. elastic. Horizontal is perfectly elastic. For example. Yeah. Vertical, vertical is inelastic. perfectly inelastic. I think it's clear. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on. Let's see. The yeah, activity, no, we just go on. No problems there. Now we'll go to go down, please, to Factors affecting price elasticity of demand. Right. Are you there? Okay. Yes. So they said the value of PED for a good depends on the number of factors. So what are these factors? Number one, availability of substitutes. Goods that have lots of closed substitutes will tend to have elastic demand. Why? Because cost, when the price increases, customers can fall to buy those ones that are substitutes, that the price are less. So how the the much uh, the more substitutes available. The more elastic the demand for a product becomes, the more elastic it becomes. Mm -hmm. Do you get the point? If a product has more substitutes, it means if product A increases its price, we can fall back to buy product B or product C or product D or product E that has a lesser price. So because you have more options have to make, options. you have other choices. That means the demand for such product will be price elastic. Do you get it? Degree of necessity. How important is the product? If the product is so important, like the basic needs, like food, clothing, shelter, there's nothing you want to do about them. No matter what the price is, we will buy them. So yeah. the demand, the, the demand for such product is price inelastic. Yeah. Are we getting what I'm talking about yeah. here? For substitute goods, if products have more substitute goods, the demand for such products will be price yeah, elastic yeah. because customers will have different choices to make. But if the product doesn't have is is a monopoly is, is a monopolized product 
or a product that has no substitute. Whatever the price is, we buy. We don't have any other option. Inelastic, yeah. It is inelastic. Products with no substitutes are priced elastic. Products without substitutes are priced in elastic. elastic. I think that is clear. Yes. Then go to degree of necessity. We're talking about how important the products are in terms of needs. Essential. Food, the essentials, yeah. Food, clothing, shelter. We need to clothe. We need to feed. Mm -hmm. So, like I said earlier, the factors that determine the elasticity of demand varies. You have to think about the kind of product you're talking about. So if the product has two substitutes, that means you have so much choices to make. If the price, if price, if product A, if the price of product A increases, we could choose to buy product B or product C or product D or E or F because we have other, we have more choices to make. Mm -hmm. But if the product is one is a monopolized product, that means you have you don't have it's just one product available. It doesn't have substitutes. So whatever the price is, we have to buy. So the demand for a product that have more substitute is price elastic, while the demand for a product without substitute is price inelastic. That is for substitutes. The, the next factor that could determine the elasticity of demand of a pro, for a product is degree of necessity. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about degree of necessity, we're talking about the basic needs. The demand for basic needs, like food, like clothing, like shelter, the demand for such product or good is priced in elastic. Irrespective of what the price is, we have to buy them. We have to clothe, we have to shelter, we have to, we have to feed it. Yeah. So we don't have any other choice than to buy. I think that one is clear. But if the product is a luxury, like holiday in Bahamas, it's not necessary to go to Bahamas for holiday. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yeah. So if the ticket or the price of going, if the amount I have to spend Going to Bahamas is expensive or it's more. I could choose to boycott or not go. Do we get the point here? Yes. So that's about degree of necessity. So how important the product is to our living might determine if it might determine if it's going to be price elastic or mm -hmm. inelastic. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Then go to the third one. Proportion, proportion of income spent on the uh -huh. product. It may be argued that if consumers spend a large proportion of their income on the product, demand will be more elastic. Yeah. So the amount of money you spend, the, the or, that means rate. you know your, your income, the amount of money you make, the the percentage, the proportion you spend on a product will determine if the product is if the demand for that product is in price in elastic or inelastic. In in Take it for example, this pen. Okay. okay, let's assume I earn maybe two thousand dollars. That's my salary. If I earn two thousand dollars, okay. buying a pen of one dollar wouldn't be a problem for me. So if the price of pen increases to two point five dollars, I will buy without even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So, do you get the point here? Yes. So the percentage of my proportion on this, this pen, man. okay, because I need the pen for my work now. So spending two point five mm, doesn't my, make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. So I wouldn't think about it. I will buy it. But if I have to spend chunk of my proportion of my income on certain products, then I'll think twice before spending. If I have to spend like $500 at a go, I'll think about it. That's why we said the proportion of income you spend on a product will determine if the product is, if the demand for such product is elastic or inelastic. inelastic. For the pen, it is priced inelastic because you are spending, no, you're not even spending 1% of your income. Yeah. But spending 500 out of 2,000, you think twice before doing that. That's 25%. Do you get it? So that's why the proportion you spend will determine if the product is price elastic or mm -hmm. inelastic. I think that is clear. Yeah. Then the next one, time. They said in the short term, good yes. having time, right? That's the next one. Are you there? Yeah. Time. They said in the short term, goods have inelastic, goods have inelastic demand because it can often take time for consumers to find substitutes when the price rises. Yeah, what they are saying here. If the price of a product increases right now, mm -hmm. within that short period of time, it is inelastic because it will take time before you could find a substitute. You're not going to find a substitute immediately. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. So the time at which you are able to find a substitute to that product that has increased in price 
will determine if it is quite elastic or, or inelastic. inelastic. So in the short term, the demand for a product is what price in elastic. In the long term, you have substitute. Inelastic. You can think about other ways of going across it or going behind it. It becomes elastic. So you have to put it in mind that, that in short time, in the short time, in the short run, the demand for a product is always the price, the demand for a product is always price in elastic. elastic. But in the long run, the it price is, is elastic. elastic. Is it clear? Any question about that? Okay. So we'll go to the relationship between PED and total revenue. Here they said, when there is price change, there will be a change in the quantity demanded and therefore a change in total revenue. As soon as there's a, as soon as a, as soon as the price of a product changes, definitely the quantity demanded of the product will change. And at the same time, the total revenue will change because we said total revenue is price multiplied by quantity. Yeah. And if price is changing, quantity is changing, then total revenue will change. It will never, you said, price multiplied by Q. Price multiplied by quantity is total revenue, right? Mm -hmm. So now price is changing. Quantity is changing. So when we multiply it together, it will not be the same anymore. If price has changed from, excuse me, if price, price, price has changed from five, let's say the price is five. Yes. The quantity then was 10. That is five times 10, 50. The price has increased to six. The quantity has reduced to nine. That's six times nine. That's... 54. Yeah. 54. Something has changed. So as soon as the price of the product increases or changes, the quantity demanded will change. And that will change the total revenue. So that the relationship between price, quantity, and total revenue is that a change in price will change the quantity demanded and the total revenue. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. So here they said, okay, they're, they're still using the same product A and product B. For product A, when the price falls from 10 to 8, there's an increase in the quantity demanded from 100 units to one pair. This means that the total revenue would 10 times 100, which is 1,000. It will become 8 times 110, which is 880. A fall in price reduces the total, reduces the total revenue. Do we get it? Yeah. Note, not every time that the price of a product changes, or if the price, not every time that the price of a product changes and the quantity changes that will lead to profit. A fall in price does not necessarily mean a profit. It could increase revenue, it could increase sales, but not profit. Not profit. Mm -hmm. Look at this case. The price fall, fell from 10 to 8. The total revenue reduces to 880, from 1,000 to 880. Mm -hmm. Though the quantity demand there increases, yes or no? Yeah. But the total revenue but fell. Yeah. But these are for uh, any elastic uh, products. In elastic, yeah, but if it was elastic, like eight times 150, this is profit. Is That's it? why we call it elastic, yeah. I think it's clear, yeah. So, I think you understand the relation between, yeah, I get it now. price, quantity, and total revenue mm -hmm. because total revenue is price multiplied by quantity. So, then if price is changing, quantity will change either much or less, and total revenue will change either increase or decrease. Any question about that? Is it clear, guys? Yes. Now I do the question. 